Welcome back, Talk Family, and thank you so much for joining me on another episode of Talk the Talk. I'm your host, my name is Desh Balay Bertrand, and joining me today is Veronique Capitans. She is the General Manager at Tucker's Auto Investments Boys. Now, Veronique has spent many, many years in the motoring trade, and she's also a nominee for the Motoring Woman of the Year Awards. Veronique is definitely a superwoman and an amazing visionary. She always puts her customers' needs first, making sure they're happy and comfortable when looking to purchase a new vehicle. I'm also very proud to say that Veronique works with our sponsors, which is Evo by NetBank. Um, so she not just buys off Evo by NetBank, but also supplies from Evo by NetBank. So we can trust that her vehicles and whatever she is offering our communities in terms of selling vehicles are top notch. Um, she leads her team by example and is known to go above and beyond for her team and her customers. So, without further ado, let's welcome Veronique. And as always, this interview is proudly brought to you by Seriti Solutions, MFC, and Evo by NetBank. Hello, Veronique. Hi, Dish. You are such a vibrant, stunning, I was going to say little, but let's say petite, dynamite. Thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Yeah, you have so much of energy and that's so amazing. Yes, I think your energy is, is basically what defines you. Absolutely. And when you're excited about what you're doing and when you're excited about dealing with customers and making business work, uh -huh. I think it comes naturally. Ah, so tell our viewers more about your journey in our trade. 22 years. Oh my yes, God. 22 years. It's, it's, it's been a very long time. I was 18 when you started. Yeah. <laughs> I'm giving away my age, but nevertheless, uh, the best way I can define it is it's been an inexplicable roller coaster of mm -hmm. ups and downs, challenges and obstacles mm -hmm. that really changed and shaped my reality and morphed me into who I am today. Mm -hmm. So that's how I would describe it. Okay. It's been nothing short of amazing. Um, it's been a lot of blood, sweat and tears mm -hmm. to really get where I am today, but I really love what I do. Okay, and tell me what brands have you worked with? I've I know you for... mentioned Renault. Wow. Um, to give you an idea, I sold cars first for about six, seven years. Mm -hmm. Then I became an F&I for eight or nine years okay. before stepping into a management role. Mm -hmm. So I sold BMWs, I sold Audis, I sold Nissans, I sold Toyotas, <laughs> I've sold Renault of late. Um, but a lot of my experience has been with high end. Mm -hmm. So your Mercedes Benz, your Audis, um, that sort of thing. Okay. And then what is your opinion about our platform? I think your platform is amazing. Mm -hmm. And I think it really helps highlight not only the challenges of women in business today, mm -hmm. but it also addresses um, the, the, the discrepancies between men and women's pay, between men and women's rights in the industry. Absolutely. And it really helps address the gender specific competency gaps. Mm -hmm. and, and I think that's amazing. Tell me, what is it that keeps you motivated to stay in the motoring trade? What are you so passionate about? I think the motor trade is in your blood. Mm -hmm. And I say this because I didn't set out to work in the motor industry. Mm -hmm. um, I studied psychology and I studied communications and I've got degrees in those. Oh, wow. And my plan was to work in the training and facilitation space. Mm -hmm. Don't you need to be a psychologist um, and, and uh, um, a PR um, expert? to work in the motoring trade despite what position you are in? I would definitely say so. I'd say you need to be a number of things, so, a doctor so, included. Yeah, so don't, so don't um, uh, you know, think that your qualifications are not empowering your position right No, 100%. Now. <laughs> Education is always a bonus. Uh -huh. And I always say this, knowledge empowers you to do better in whatever role mm -hmm. you take. And it's definitely helped me in the motor trade. Mm -hmm. Do Absolutely. well and understand my customers, understand my staff. Yeah, uh -huh. yeah definitely. Yes. So what is your management style? My management style, I would say, is a more collaborative, consultative approach. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why. I think employees do better in an environment where they feel valued and appreciated and where they feel that they're involved in the decisions made that pertain to them. Right. 
right because they are essentially working in those roles and if you're just going to dictate then they're not going to find their best way to navigate to achieve so it's very important to have them informed definitely so how important do you think is mental health um, in the workplace this is a very very significant question for me mm -hmm. and i'll tell you why mm -hmm. i myself have mental health issues uh -huh. and when i was a salesman in the motor industry i had the terrible experience of being hijacked and raped by a customer um this oh really oh no i it didn't even really know destroyed my world and I have to can, do you, can you just quickly take us back to, if you don't mind, no what problem. happened? Um, and, and the reason I'm asking is because it's not many women. I'm a rape survivor. Um, Amazing. I, I was gang raped when I was 15. Yes. And um, I've been in a GBV relationship and where my fiance actually tried to kill me and he shot himself wow. in my driveway. Wow. So it's not often that I actually get to talk. I know that a lot of women that sit here um, have been a victim of either sexual assault or rape or know someone that's been in a GBV relationship so that's my other line of work uh, but it's not often that someone in the motoring trade will openly speak about that so I'm going to definitely ask you to please um, help me uh, because you are in retail you are working in the space I'm not yes. how can women like yourself protect themselves in a situation like that and maybe tell us what happened um, so what happened was I had a customer come through wanting to buy a car he posed as a customer, we did his finance, everything was approved. Mm -hmm. And of course, being a salesperson, you want to deliver good customer service. Mm -hmm. So when he randomly phoned me and said, everything's done, I know, but I haven't driven the car. Mm -hmm. um, do you mind if I come for a test drive? And being the enthusiastic salesperson I was, I was so keen to provide that test drive. Um, and this happened more than 15 years ago. So obviously our security mechanisms in dealerships isn't what it is today. Mm -hmm. um, and unfortunately, I didn't take a copy of the driver's license. But I then found out after the event that the driver's license and the paperwork done to complete the finance application was, was fraudulent anyway. Um, and unfortunately, this guy just took me and the rest is history, as they say. Right, as, and, right. you know, I try not to focus on the horrid details. Mm -hmm. But I think it's so important for women in the motoring industry mm -hmm. to say, this is my reality. Mm -hmm. This is what happened. Mm -hmm. It happened on the job. Mm -hmm. it's, it's affected my ability to do my job well Absolutely. for a long period of time. Mm -hmm. And it was only through extensive counselling and extensive work that I managed to overcome that obstacle. Mm -hmm. And I then understood that being a salesman at that time wasn't gonna work for me mm -hmm. because of the trauma I experienced as a salesperson. Right. And it prompted me to go into an f &I role, which I probably wouldn't have done had the situation not happened. Mm -hmm. But I then took on an f &I role because I didn't have to do test drives and right. I felt safe in my space mm -hmm. in the financial role. Right. Not knowing that the financial role would enrich my knowledge and, and get me to a stage where I could be sort of a holistic manager mm -hmm. because I got that skills from f &I. Right. However, we don't want to discourage sales yes. executives. No, so sure. how can they ensure that they are not placed in that position? You've, 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 you've got to be very cautious and I think okay. in, a, in a sense that um, a lot of dealerships today have test drive completion forms mm -hmm. where you basically fill in all the customer's information, you right. take down their details right. and you take copies of their driver's license yeah. to keep. Yeah. You know, unfortunately, criminals will always be clever and sharp and, and mm -hmm. find a way to beat the system. Right. But mm -hmm. I think it's important that you also trust your gut. Yes. Ask important questions. Right. If a customer wants you to bring the car out to you, you've got to question why. Mm -hmm. You've got to question the time of day. Yes. Crimes normally happen very early in the morning or very late in the mm -hmm. afternoon. So when you've got somebody that's being unreasonable and pushing you to maybe come off site with the vehicle. Mm -hmm. You've really got to be careful. You maybe need to take somebody with you. I was about to say yes. that. I think just to say, if it's before hours and after hours, just to safeguard yourself, 100%. take someone with you. It doesn't mean, I mean, we women in the motoring trade, yes, we're very strong, we're very powerful in our own right, and we, we want to do it by ourselves, we want to prove. But in doing that, in trying to prove that we can do it, we should not, um, you know, we should not, not take that extra precautionary measures Absolutely. and by asking for help it 
does not at all, um, you know, belittle. Hundred you know, percent. No, just safeguard yourself. You want to take that card to the client and ensure that you are in a position of power at all in times. order to uh, face whatever it is that you might or might be waiting for you on the other side. And having another female or male with you um, to assist you would be great. It's always and thank great. you so much. I just want to say thank you before we continue this interview for bringing that to me. I did not know this. I, I'm very grateful for this interview. It's an absolute pleasure. And, and I'm very grateful that you as a psychologist might later on want to get involved with the hundreds of women that I deal with in the motoring trade that have faced that. And maybe you can assist them, assist them from a different perspective in terms of empowering them and encouraging them, motivating them. So I'm, I'm thank, thank you so much for It's that. an absolute pleasure <laughs> and, and I'd really love to do that mm -hmm. because after this incident I did start my own NPO where I was assisting rape victims write wow. their statements mm -hmm. and really try and bring the perpetrators to justice. Absolutely. So it's something I'm incredibly passionate about. Mm -hmm. I need these women to understand that if I could recover and move on to achieve what I have. Mm -hmm. Anybody can do it mm -hmm. with the right support. Absolutely. And by God's grace. And, and I think a critical um, you know, statement that you made um, should be highlighted is that counseling is extremely imperative. You've got to go through those counseling Definitely. phases. I did not. When this happened to me when I was 15, I waited for 21 Shame. years to go for counseling. And uh, there's a lot that cannot be healed because of the initial uh, or what should have happened um, subsequent uh, to the incidents. Definitely. So it's so important for you to just you know, speak to one person and, and get someone. It's always in confidentiality. Uh, if you contact me as well, I've, I've got hundreds of cases open at the moment but it's in you know pure confidentiality and it's never going to be repeated unless you want it to be repeated so it, having said that let's just go back to the motoring setting uh, the motoring trade setting for a female is there any discrimination or ha have there been any discrimination that you have followed gender discrimination and how did you deal with it Sure. Well, that's, that's a very in-depth question and there's many mm -hmm. answers for those questions. Mm -hmm. Well, you know, taking back, obviously, I come from a previous generation mm -hmm. um, that were maybe a little bit more conservative mm -hmm. and we, there was a lot more male presence in the motor industry. Um, but you can take your pick. Firstly, I'm non-white. Secondly, I'm female. Mm -hmm. Thirdly, I have mental health issues. Mm -hmm. So the discrimination varies right. according to those factors. Right. And what I found in the motor industry was that as a woman, you had to work twice as hard for half as much. Absolutely. And the way I managed that was I always made sure I worked harder than everybody else. Mm -hmm. I always made sure I was there first and I left last. I always made sure my department was the most profitable. Mm -hmm. And in doing so, ensuring the success of the sales department. Mm -hmm. Because only that way would I be seen as an equal mm -hmm. when compared to a man. Mm -hmm. Which is sometimes very unfair. Mm -hmm. But with change and with time, we need to break the status quo where women are seen as less than. Yeah. Yeah, we definitely need to do that by highlighting a woman's strength, mm -hmm. which is unique. Absolutely, and it's, it's very important to know that, uh, you know, we as women, as you said, have to work twice as hard, sometimes 10 times as hard, but we are capable, very much capable. Definitely. And it's your struggles that actually bring you through and make you stronger and more courageous and even sometimes more empathetic towards other Absolutely. females because it's important for us to pay it forward. It's important for us that have been in the trade for longer to assist those that are you know, coming into the trade and facing these challenges. And, um, you know, you are a pure um, example oh, of, thank you. The, I must say this, that, you know, nothing can actually dim the light from wow. within. And you have proven that. So I'm so oh, grateful to you. have met you. Any words of advice, last words of advice to young girls that want to join our trade? There's so many. Um, but firstly, I would say you've got to be prepared for rejection. Mm -hmm. If the sales is a numbers game. So out of 100 deals, you'll maybe do 20. Yeah, out of the 20 can. that's approved, you'll probably <laughs> deliver eight. So get used to rejection. Right. Get used to being stereotyped mm -hmm. and, and get used to having overcome that. Yeah. And never let that rejection and, and the difficultness of the game mm -hmm. take away your self-belief. Mm -hmm. Oh wow, that's amazing. Yeah, I just want to end off by saying that 
uh, you know experience tells you what to do and uh, confidence allows you to do it and you Definitely. are full of confidence thank you i'm going to share that i've never really done this but i'm going to actually share this on my personal pages wow um, that would be lovely I think thank it's you so powerful and so um you know it extremely resonates it just resonates with my own personal story. That's you said amazing. three things. Um, I'm a woman of color. Um, I'm uh, a female. And most importantly, I have mental health issues. Yes, 100%. <laughs> there we are. We're <laughs> aligned. <laughs> definitely, definitely. Thank you so much. It's really, an absolute pleasure. Really, really Thank you for having you. me and giving me the opportunity to speak my truth oh. and, and possibly make a difference. You're welcome. And then maybe we could have a few more sessions like this. Definitely. Just to educate. So thank you so much. It's an absolute pleasure. Thanks for having me. <laughs> You're welcome. Viewers, we would like to thank you for your continued support and encourage you to like and share our content. Our non-profit companies, the Motoring Woman of the Year Awards, powered by MFC and Evo by NetBank, and the Talk the Talk Studios, sponsored by Seriti Solutions and Evo by NetBank, are platforms aimed at empowering, uplifting and celebrating the women of motoring South Africa. We are not just telling stories, we are changing lives. If you are searching for a new or pre-owned vehicle, please visit www.auto.evo.africa. We have a wide range of vehicles on sale for you to choose from. And we only advertise on behalf of reliable and trustworthy MFC accredited dealerships. This car listing portal is user friendly and you can also find vehicle reviews, car maintenance tips and automotive advice all courtesy of Talk the Talk Studios. So as I said, um, it is confidence in our bodies, mind and spirit that allows us to keep looking for new adventures and to excel in the adventures that we are currently in. Ladies, having a growth mindset means you know you can learn from your mistakes. You can improve by working hard. You will never give up. You're determined to get better. Self-reflection will help you succeed and bad experiences will definitely empower you to be better and want to achieve more. You can overcome challenges with effort and you can train your brain to do so. Life is a limited amount of time and energy. Let us use it for maximum impact. And that is a teaching from my guru, Sadhguru. With that, I would like to remind you that the question should never be, who's going to let me? It should always be, who's going to stop me?